This is going to be one of the most important videos that I ever make, especially if you are either a beginner or someone that was more advanced that has now since fallen off and isn't in the shape that they want to be in. Because I actually believe that I have the solution and it works so much better than diet and exercise. And this is not a semantic game. Trust me. I am literally telling you from my heart what I believe works and will work for you. Diet and exercise though will not be the fix for you if you are struggling with your weight or your level of fitness right now and you want to make change. The key is going to be to replace that with nutrition and training. Again, don't you run on me and start thinking that I played a semantic game on you. Before you say that they're the same thing, just a different word, here's my opinion. They are so diametrically opposed that it's like east and west. If nutrition is west, diet is east. If training is south, then exercise is north. And literally, if you followed the different direction, you'd be walking in the opposite direction of the person that I am saying is going to reach their goal. That's how important it is. That's why I like to use those compass directions to sort of illustrate the point here. So why are they different? How are they different? Well, let me explain that to you and prove it to you. Diet is something too casual. Exercise is something too casual. They are both somewhat unplanned. Most of all, they're very temporary. They're very temporary. I had personal experience with this as a kid. My mother struggled with her weight for a long period of time. Rest her soul. She passed away at a very young age. She could never get her weight under control. Never. She exercised a lot. She ordered every single thing that, that she saw on an infomercial, a new fit, fitness gadget. She had every single diet book. She had the South Beach diet. And stop me if this is sounding somewhat familiar to you. She had the Atkins diet. She followed all of those, ultimately failed off and stopped doing all of them. Because as I always say, either on a diet or off a diet, people literally say I'm on a diet because ultimately you will not be on that diet. You'll be off. She exercised all the time, but there was no plan around it. There was no progression around it. The plan, the progression, that's what makes it training. And without those two components, you are literally going in opposite directions. The planned progression, the purpose, and there's another word there, purpose, the purpose has to be there. If there's no purpose behind what you do, you're never going to ultimately get to where you want to be. It's that important. For instance, do you go to the gym right now? You can nod your head along with me. If you do, do you engage in weight training? Or do you just do one thing? You just sort of get on the treadmill and walk? Because I'll also say I think that training, a good training plan, is always going to be multifaceted. There's going to be more than one component. Let's say I'm a, I'm a power lifter even. I know that mobility and flexibility and stability work are going to help me even in my goal to be a better power lifter. There's always multiple facets that go into becoming a really good, completely developed person. So let's say though you are just focused on one thing right now. If you go to the gym and you get on the treadmill and you walked, let's say yesterday at a level four for 30 minutes, I could pretty much bet my ass that today you walked at a level four for 30 minutes. And if you are going consistently to the gym, you probably walk every time you go there at level four for 30 minutes. And if you are shaking your head right now, I'm telling you, I applaud the effort. I really do because most people don't get out of the house to go do that. And I know you are feeling accomplished for doing that and you should, but it's the lack of the progression in the plan around that that's causing you to not get to where you want to be. And the adopting of that plan is going to set you free. I promise you. It will set you free. If you look at it from the diet standpoint, again, it's so temporary. The word itself is so damn short term. If it was more than a diet, if you had intentions of making it more than a diet and being how you eat from now on, then it would become nutrition. Nutrition is just what you feed your body and fuel your body for performance or just for daily life. But nutrition is not something, I'm not on my nutrition plan. This is what I do. This is how I eat. And I'm not saying that mine is the only right way to do it. There are so many ways that you can go out and adopt in terms of your nutrition approach that may vary very much from how I eat. But if it's something that you can stick to and you enjoy and it is congruent with becoming a healthier person who doesn't struggle with their weight and it fits all the requirements of, of fueling your body and doing so in a way where you're not creating any kind of any kind of nutrient deficit in some way, 
then it's, it's, it's doing its job. And you are now on a nutrition plan and you will be locked in for life. Once you start following that plan, it's meeting all those requirements and you enjoy it. You're locked in. There's zero effort at that point. Trust me, I've been there. I've been a guy who struggled as a young kid with a really bad diet. I, I ate all kinds of shitty foods. I was eating nothing, nothing good. And I hate to say that because it's sort of embarrassing, you know, about my, my family. Or, you know, like, they tried. They tried to get me to eat well, but I just wouldn't do it. I was a kid. But I've, I've come full circle. I've actually gone those opposite directions. But this is the next point that I think is critical because you might be inspired right now to say, I could do this. I'm going to do this now, Jeff. I believe what you're saying. And I know how, how passionate you are about getting me in that right direction. But the big thing is you have to allow the time and the, the mishaps along the way because nobody, me included, ever got from point A to point B or from east to west without getting a little bit off track along the way. The key is to understand you're not doing anything wrong if it happens to you. You're not a failure if that happens to you. You are doing exactly what every other person who's on that right path has done to get there. We all followed the same progression. It all took time and we all fell off track certain ways. The idea though was because there was a plan in place, because the plan led to a goal, you were able to get there ultimately. Because when you have that goal in mind, you're able to navigate yourself from that path that you sort of strayed from back to that center path to reach your goal. And the idea about goals is, again, they can vary from one person to the other. My goal might have been to be ripped and lean. You might just want to be healthier and fit at a more modest level of body fat. Perfect. Perfect. But we all have to get there the same way. And that is by allowing for some of these variations off that path. If you do what I'm telling you here, guys, and you understand that there is a key fundamental difference to those two words, or four words, really, you will finally find that success so that you can start to make that plan. If you look at one of the types of training, calisthenics, right? You may have zero interest in training like a calisthenic athlete. You don't want to do bodyweight exercises. Fine. That doesn't have to be part of your goal set. You will realize, though, that every advanced level calisthenic athlete who you've ever seen maybe on, or on a, a TikTok or something, doing something really crazy, did not get to being able to do that really hard, crazy exercise without going through all the variations and progressions first. They probably failed multiple times. They might have even fallen off of a bar or two to get to that point. But they got there because they realized that this is something that they want to achieve and that goal is in place and the acceptance of some failure along the way is there. If you follow a plan and you set a plan, again, you will get to where you want to be without feeling like a failure if you slip up. Last point I'm going to make. If your goal was to get lean, don't say I want to lose 50 pounds. Then go out and start calculating your caloric intake that's necessary to get you to a 50 pound weight loss. You will never succeed doing that. You've set your goal too high. You've looked too quickly to the west or to the east or whatever direction I gave you in the beginning. I forget now. You set the goal too high. How about this? Focus on losing five pounds first and then calculate your deficit off of that. It's going to be a lot more achievable and something you actually will probably achieve. If you're trying to get to a lean level of body fat, I talked about this before, do you realize that no 40% body fat guy or girl ever got to 8% body fat by going from 40 to 8? They went from 40 to mid 30s. And then when they got to mid 30s, they set that new goal and they went to lower 30s. And they went from lower 30s to mid 20s and mid 20s to lower 20s. They didn't get there from going from here to here. They didn't look at the picture of the 8% guy and say, that's what I want to be. Maybe that was the inspiration, but that's not how they got there. They got there by appreciating the small victories along the way. And the same thing with nutrition and diet. It took me a while. I made rounds of changes to what I ate, where I started making small substitutions. I got rid of the obvious stuff that I knew wasn't good. I got rid of the sweets first. Everyone knows that large amounts of dessert probably aren't conducive to getting lean. So I got rid of the obvious things first and I made another pass and another pass and another pass to ultimately I was able to fine tune it down. But if I ever tried to jump into the shoes of the person that was doing all the things that I wanted to do, I would have failed. 
In other words, the guy who's already 8% body fat has a very specific way of eating. He's very consistent. He goes to the gym all the time. He's doing all the things he needs to do. If I ever, knowing what they're doing, just tried to start doing it today, I never would have made it because it'd be too far of a diversion from the path I'm on right now. It didn't take you three days to develop the habits and lifestyle you have right now. It probably took you five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. It takes a while to ingrain that lifestyle and departing from where you are right now, anytime we have to make a change in our lives, it's always a big ask. You can't expect to throw yourself into the deep end of the pool and think you're gonna swim. You gotta start going in little by little. Get the feet wet first, then get up to the shins and knees, go in, make sure the water's okay, and then you start to swim. And when you do this, you will make it. And when you do that, you will replace diet and exercise permanently from your dialogue and realize that they are nothing, that this is not a semantic game. They are nothing at all similar to nutrition and training. And when you get nutrition and training to become part of not only your dialogue but your lifestyle, you are set for the rest of your life, I promise you that. If I can help you that way, guys, I will. I have programs available over at athletics.com where we do exactly that. This is the approach I take. I've been writing a whole book on this approach because I know this is the path to success. If you allow me to take you there, I will do it. In the meantime, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I, I hope it created some thought patterns in your head where you're gonna question, how do you think about this right now? Tell me in the comments below, how has it been? What's your journey been like? Most importantly though, where are you going from here? All right guys, I hope you found the video helpful. We'll be back here again with a new video in a few days. See ya.